This is the JFJ Conspiracy, where the shop talk is rough. I'm Jim. And I'm Frank. And I'm Jerry. And this is the JFJ Conspiracy Podcast, where the shop talk is rock. How are you guys doing this week? Uh, better than you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Hang been, in there, Frank. Sorry to say. Up. Yeah. My been gosh. fighting this cold for the third week straight now. Mm-hmm. And um, as you'll hear later, when I, when I did an interview with Nick from Dorothy Lane, I uh, did everything I could to not cough and hack while he was talking, but... Uh, it's it's been a long three weeks. This is getting old oh, real quick. Lord. Yeah. My gosh. So, but anyways, that's life, right? Mm-hmm. So that uh, is life. I don't know about three weeks though. That oh. sounds a little. Well, we're not stuff going around. Look, Uncle Frank is fifty-five years old here. Uh, I'm not twenty anymore. <laughs> Same here, back. folks. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, I want to talk to you guys. I want to get your input on... Yeah, it's weird that a 30-year-old like myself would be doing a podcast yeah. with you 55 and, and I, I, I was wondering, uh, I wonder if folks on Conspiracy <laughs> Land are going to realize, you know, why, why is Frank and Jerry 25 years older than Jim? Yeah. How I did know. they hang out in high school? Yeah, well, that's odd. <laughs> Jim was a prodigy, remember? Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, he was... was. He graduated at you know, 12, so... <laughs> 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 this is episode number 11. 11. And... Um, want to tell you guys i got an email from uh, uh itunes the other day and they said please do not put episode numbers in your titles anymore and then they the second next day they send another letter out and this is just a general letter and it says yeah go ahead and put your episode numbers in there that's okay um, but we prefer you to put in your tags when you're uploading the episodes so from here on out when you look on YouTube and you look everywhere else, it's just going to say the JFJ Conspiracy Podcast, and there won't be any more episode numbers. And uh, it'll be in the tags, so it's going to be interesting to move forward. Um, yeah. We're, we're trying to catalog things, but we'll so see we'll, how it goes. We'll, you'll still see it on YouTube, though, right? Yes. Episode yeah. numbers. Okay. Right. So we'll see how it goes. But I want to get your guys' take. Uh, our 11th episode, and uh, we featured bands in virtually... Almost every episode. And um, with the exception of a few awesome bands and the bands that we're actually going to feature tonight, um, how do you guys feel about these bands not helping promote this podcast? (laughs) Uh, It hurts, really. I mean, uh, especially when you get a band that you're excited about. And uh, some of the bands have been great about turning around and uh, sharing on their social media. But you know, the only way we're going to grow is uh, is by the bands that we are promoting to promote what we're doing so yeah. that their audience gets a chance to hear us. And and our regular audience, the people who are just listening uh, every couple of weeks, and God bless you. We appreciate you. Absolutely. We really do, people out uh, there. We really do. Life. We do. Um, we love it. We love you. But but if it's going to grow, it'd be great if these people turned around and sh- turned other people on to it who are also music fans, people right. they know. Yeah. So smash the like button, hit the notification bell, subscribe, and please please share it. Share. Yeah. Please share yeah. it. You know, and it's you... not so much that guys is prom- promoting us, but we're promoting them. And I'm not saying you know one hand washes the other, but some of the bands don't even get back to us. You know, they'll throw it out there and we'll try to get a bio or try to get, and it's like, you know, you, you wait a, some time. It's, you know, I mean, whatever's clever. I could understand you know, if we I, were I don't, thrashing. I don't understand some of it. What's that? You know, I can understand if we were thrashing the band while we're reviewing them. But you know yeah. what? Um, we're really only promoting bands with music that we like because we're mm-hmm. the ones right now searching for them. Mm-hmm. So um, if everybody watching everybody listening would share this podcast on their facebook page or like it share it on on youtube however instagram however however you get down on the social media world spread the word of the jfj conspiracy podcast so we can continue to do this because uh, yeah you know we're having a good time but we want to see the numbers grow Mm -hmm. absolutely um 
changing gears just a little bit. April 13th, 2019 is Record Store record Day. Record Store Day. Oh, Record Store yeah. Day. Yeah. Coming up. Yes. Um, yeah. I saw a partial There's, list of some albums like from the UK the that are going to be released. released excuse mm. me. Um, haven't seen an mm. official list yet for the United States, but I'm looking forward to that, and we will be doing another episode uh, upcoming for another Record Store Day. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Hey, there's some great stuff coming out. Yes. Yes, Jim. There is some good, really good stuff coming out. So uh, cool. I'm sure there's going to be plenty for us to be excited about. Talk yes. about. We'll I do I another have, uh, do another special. I think. Good. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't been online enough to look look it up. So, um, kind of waiting, and uh, we'll get to it. And hopefully, we can actually get out there and buy some of these records. Mm-hmm. And um, still waiting to add Ben Stiller to my collection. But that's vinyl. <laughs> vinyl is in people, and I love it. Yes. No mm. luck on the Ben Stiller, huh? Oh, you know, I, it was at the record store, but I just couldn't part with the $24 at the time. Because so. I actually listened to uh, some of it on iTunes. and Oh, you uh, did? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, you know, oh. not what I expected, but you know, <laughs> I bet not. It was a hard pass. <laughs> hard pass. <laughs> that's Frank being nice, people. Yeah, well. Yeah, that's Frank being nice. I think I went back and actually listened to a little bit of it. Either either on YouTube or iTunes or somewhere, mm-hmm. and uh, it was interesting. Like like you said, not what not what you think it was going to be. And no, uh, no, I was expecting a little bit more of a punk edge to it. It was a little bit more avant garde type of music mm-hmm. that yeah, uh, artsy fartsy didn't didn't really didn't really grab me. So mm. it didn't stick with me. I'll tell you that because no. I can't I can't tell you what it was. I was no. To, no. <laughs> and you know what I miss? I miss Dr. Demento. Do you guys remember sitting by the radio and listening <laughs> oh, to his... Mentions in Dementites. Oh, Sunday, Sunday night. Sunday night. Sunday night. Yeah. Amy T. Yeah. Oh, tweedly. There was some, <laughs> some good music. I used to have a reel-to-reel recorder that would record, I think, up to three hours at a time on the big reel. And I would record just the countdown. And I had... Right at the end. Yeah. Sure. Oh, I had... Volumes and volumes of that, you know, and wow. you know, dead puppies and all those great songs. Barnes and, and Barnes, yeah, by uh, Barnes and Barnes, where Weird Al got to start. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And he was recorded that by, in a, by Bologna, I believe, right? It, he recorded it in a uh, bathroom up at uh, uh, San Luis uh, Obispo. Yes. Oh, yeah. and uh, uh, Frank Zappa, titties and beer. Another big one. Yes. <laughs> Can yeah. I say that? That was yeah. number one on Demento, guys. You for already a long said time. it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know how long that was number one. I remember when it came to long. number one and they hadn't played it played it yet. You knew it was number one. I'd, I'd turn the radio off because it was number one for weeks and weeks and weeks. The the drummer uh, for Zappa was uh, Dale Boisio. and uh, his wife. Christmas? His wife. No, Dale. Dale no, was the wife. Dale. Yeah. What was his name? <laughs> uh, Terry. Terry, Terry. Boisio. Yeah, is Terry? that what it was? Terry? Yeah. yeah. Well, Terry he had he had a girl's name. She had a guy's name. That's why right. I'm confused. Right. That's what it was, Jim. That's what it was. But he right. was a heck, drummer. heck of a drummer. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm. But you know, Zappa did. He was no slouch. He 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 performed with some solid musicians. Oh, and, he was and his good. music was a little um, too serious. The music portion of it, more too jazzy for my taste. Mm. Um, and we're going to talk about speaking of music that's a little was a little too. Serious, but we're going to talk about Rush Permanent Waves here in a little bit. And um, I like it. Awesome, but it's serious music. They're, they're not a fun band. They're a serious band. So, <laughs> um, we'll get into that in just a little bit. Yes. Yep. Another Look, band who, who played with uh, a lot of volume, but controlled volume. You know, they're, you heard every note that, that was performed. Just amazing. Mm. Yeah. Well, right now we've got three bands we're going to uh, introduce to you guys out there in Conspiracy Land. And uh, Jerry, why don't you go first? Yes, because sir. the first band that we have that you're going to talk about, they've been instrumental in a lot of our social media lately. And we want to say yes to The Mange, thank you very much. Thank you very thank much, you The very Mange. Much. Uh, from Scranton, Pennsylvania. A uh, pretty new band. They just come out with an EP less than a month ago, folks. It's called Scratch This. So if you have the mange, you need to scratch that. <laughs> or Scratch This is the album. Uh, 
Did I just hear that? No, you heard nothing. Premature. You heard nothing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, back to the mange. Uh, we've got uh, Butch Frable on guitar, Trish McCormick Williams on vocal, who is really great as far as getting back to us and, and us talking to her. Wonderful woman. Uh, we've got Derek Dunstone on bass and Swaz on drums. Now it's S W A Z guys, so I don't know if that's Swaz, Sway, Swazzy, whatever. On the sticks. Derek. Hold on a second. Yes. Swaz on the sticks. What okay. Go ahead. There goes Frank, folks. Uh, you know, I was, try, I was trying to figure it out, too. I go, is there something I'm missing? Yeah. I, I probably am. But the EP is called Scratch This. And, and guys, and thank you, Frank, and, and the mange, and Jim, uh, I love this. It's good old-fashioned rock and roll. Good, sharp bass playing, wonderful lead and rhythm, great vocals. This, She has a wonderful voice. Um, Trish, if you guys get, ever get a chance, please do a Janis Joplin song. It ah. just it's deserving of your pipes. It's great stuff, folks. Good old fashioned rock, rock and roll. Uh, great licks, great bass. Um, they got a new EP dropping this summer. I can't wait to hear it. But I've played the heck out of Scratch This, and I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, good well, rock and roll, people. The song we're going to play tonight oh. is called Selfie Queen. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a listen. Selfie Queen. <laughs> that was uh, some pretty good stuff mm. there with that solo. The mange, folks. Mm. What I got to ask is um, when you guys give this a listen and you hear that twin solo sound and just blaring in each ear, man, that's... I want to know what, what, what they're recording with. I really do. You guys going direct with, with plugins? Is that just Marshalls and a screamer what are you using you got to get back to me on that because uh both those guitars sounded great get back uh, to him butch i was thinking the exact same thing great tone yeah oh, a uh, really great tone on the guitar delicious um <laughs> yeah it, when, when the song starts mm. out it has almost like a little bluesy feel to it mm. and um and kind of a little reminiscent of april wine there a little bit yeah. well that bass because that bass and, uh, is so clear like nice clean bass, real sharp. Yeah. Oh yes, 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 yes. Uh, and their influences, if I may inter interrupt, guys, s since Jim said that, we've got UFO, Sabbath, Deep Purple, Aerosmith, Stones, and a ton of blues. Jim, it says, mm. and yeah. a ton of blues. All the, so all the stuff good we, ears. all the stuff we grew up with. Yes, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we liked it so much. That's probably why we liked it. Yeah. Love it. Tons of energy. Yeah, I can't wait. And for and uh, and attitude. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, that is the mange with Selfie mm -hmm. Queen. 
get out there, and they're available on Bandcamp, and I'm sure they've got stuff on iTunes and everywhere else, Jerry. Yeah, I bought my version off of iTunes. Uh, they're on Bandcamp, Spotify. Uh, yeah, I, and I follow her on fa- follow them on Facebook. So Facebook's how I follow them, mm-hmm. and then I bought the album off of uh, iTunes, folks. Very but they're cool. on everything. Yeah, check them out. Oh, oh I wow. love it! What a dose, <laughs> mm, dose of rock and roll. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, moving ahead. Uh, why don't we go with Jim? Because, like I said, I've got an interview with Nick I want to play for you guys from Dorothy Lane. So, Jim, why don't you go ahead and tell us about the band you're bringing this week? Okay, so this week I have a band called Propeller, and they are out of San Francisco. It's two guys it's Greg Randall and Will Anderson. Uh, they write and perform all the songs. I, I tried to pin them down on who plays what. And uh, they got back to me, and they said, uh, both of us do everything. Yeah, okay. So it sounds like they switch off. There's, mm-hmm. They switch off between guitars, bass, drums, whatever. Um, when I first heard it, I was thinking, like, oh, man, total replacements kind of vibe, um, uh, Paul Westerberg kind of feel to it. And I started going, I kind of scrolled to the bottom of the page. I was listening to him on Bandcamp. I kind of scrolled to the bottom of the page, and they had, they had tagged replacements uh-huh. westerberg uh-huh. <laughs> uh makes sense bob mold and and so um they kind of asked the question what happens when your heroes stop making records mm-hmm. and said for them the answer was simple you just start making the music that pays homage to those uh-huh. bands that you love and uh um you know they cite uh big star and uh like i said replacements paul westerberg bob mold Mm. Uh, another guy who I love. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's it, to be totally cliche. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the the total. Uh, if there's one thing you can say about a power pop band that's uh, sort of the ultimate compliment, it's you know more hooks than a tackle box. There you go. And I mean the Ooh, guitars cool. are so hooky, Jerry. You're gonna love that. I that bet Angley, I will. Rick and Bacher and. Um, oh. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. But there's all kinds of riffs on top of it, uh, great harmonies, uh, great melodies. Just the song craft is, is top notch. And so, uh, and it's all throughout. So this is their uh, third release, uh, full length. And I, I thought that this had just come out, but this actually came out in August of 2017. So okay, it's been a out for a while. Of, yeah, yeah, a couple of years old. And, uh, Previous to that, they had a, a full length called Fall Off the World in 20, uh, 2015. Oh, I'm sorry, 2016, and then uh, a single in 2015. So, had something out every year for, for those three years 15, 16, yeah. and 17, and, cool. and nothing since. But I'm, I'm hoping they're going to put out something again because uh, this is some, some top notch top notch song craft here. So, the song we're going to listen to is called little unsteady all right this is propeller with little unsteady tell me i'm almost ready can you tell me things about you now tell me all those stories has anything changed are we still the same Cause I don't know you anymore Do you know me anymore? Tell me over and over Again and again I don't understand Tell me is this worth trying? I'm a little 
that is very a catchy. Bit, very yeah, good. It's a little <laughs> bit of propeller with a uh, little unsteady. Now, I could have played the whole song because this is right up Jim's alley at two minutes and 27 seconds. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, don't catchy break three minutes, the whole way through. Yeah. Not with Jim. Don't break yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't bother checking what the actual. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what, the, <laughs> okay. what the actual average <laughs> average song length was, but they, they stay yeah. right around that three minute mark pretty well. They're either just under or just over. Close enough. Most, huh? most things, yeah. yeah. Very well produced, uh, slick. And uh, yeah, for a, a song that's, like I say, two minutes and 27 seconds, it's got everything in there you want. It's got nice it's hook, jangly. brings you in. Nice yeah, jangly. You like the yeah. jangly. I like, I, the, I like the vocals. Um, um, the, the, the bass playing in it. Oh, yes. my gosh. Yeah. I mean, for a bass player, I'm like just listening to those runs and those little fills that he throws in there. And, and the solo, uh, not super flashy, just just extremely yeah. tasteful and fits the song perfectly. It did. That's what I was going to say. It fit really nice. Uh, both breaks were really good. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm available. excited about these guys. I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm part of the fan club now. All right, and and they're they're available also on Bandcamp and uh, probably everywhere else. I'm guessing so. I found them on Bandcamp. I'm not really good at looking at other places. Once I find them in one spot, but. Um, I'm sure yeah. you probably find it on uh, iTunes and Spotify and right. wherever else good music is found. Yeah. Well, I, I'd be nice interested to hear some now. of their other songs because they, yeah. they are catchy. Yeah, and, and yeah I'll send you uh, – they've got a great video that's um, – uh, gosh darn, I can't remember the name of the song. But it, they, they feature the Ramones throughout the video and um, kind of the song kind of pays a little bit of a uh, – Homage. Homage, I guess you could say, to, to the Ramones. It's got like a little hey-ho, let's go kind of thing Can't going go in it. There. Yeah, oh. and it's just a great, fun song. All right. Reminds you of summer, doesn't it? It's yeah. a good time to listen yes, to it, it now that we're yeah. in 30-degree weather. It's yeah. <laughs> summer and being a teenager. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's... We're miles away from both right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm much closer to being a teenager than you that's are. That's right. Yes, I you are. Yeah, you got, you got 25 years on us, Jim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you going to do? That's, that's <laughs> life, folks. Keep, keep getting older, Frank. That's yes, what we're going to do. do. <laughs> I've aged so much just during this single podcast. Yeah, oh, I know you mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, check out Propeller. And um, the band that I've got... Um, let me go back and just tell you a little bit. Um, and you guys can relate to this because I know you did the exact same thing. But back in my dairy days, I used to work, get paid every two weeks. I would take, I made $3.25 an hour, first of all. So mm. I would take my check and I would break it into gas money, insurance, uh, little, like my brother Dennis says, uh, walking around money. The yeah. wham, gotta, yeah, gotta have walking around money, yeah, walking yep. around money, and yep. then yep. Um, with that walking around money, what I would do is go up to Alasta to Music Plus. That's where I'd go. Yeah, if I couldn't make it down to Tower Records, it was Music Plus, and back then, um, three dollars and ninety nine cents bought you an album uh, with tax. That was four dollars and twenty three cents. So guess That's what? Abe here. Lincoln got me every two weeks, man, a new album, vinyl. Yeah. And the way I yep. shopped is by album cover because a lot of the bands that I liked didn't know I liked yet. They weren't on the radio. Iron Maiden wasn't on the radio. Um, you know, even, even bands like Molly Hatchet, we were just talking about that earlier, Jim, about their album yeah. covers were just Excellent. amazing art. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, so I bought a lot of band tigers of Pang from Pang Tang and things like that. Uh, but, but tigers of Pang Tang based on the cover. Yeah. Yeah. Riot. Mm -hmm. Rod Riot, Riot there, based oh, on yeah. the cover. Uh, wow. Rock City, I still have that. I still play it regular. Um, so anyways, when I was searching Bandcamp, um, I was looking at the album covers. And first of all, I think I've told you guys, okay, I, I don't want to um, promote anything that's going to give the Dark Lord and um, uh, Goat Blood and... Um, <laughs> You know, I don't want to have to sacrifice my youngest, you know, all this other stuff. And that's a lot of what's on Bandcamp in the metal really? genre. Oh, it's ridiculous. So I went to rock and I went to, I think I went to hard rock. 
And you know what I didn't find? I didn't find Shake and Abe, and I'm, I got to contact Bandcamp because that's no, where that's it should be. No, that's real rock and roll. Yeah. That's, that's... yeah, it couldn't be found. But I was going through really? page after page after page, and I came across this one album called Dorothy Lane. And it was uh, almost a drawing of a man in his maybe 40s, late 30s, and, um, but it just said Dorothy Lane. And I said, well, this makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, who's yeah. she? Right. So I played the music. The first song I played was called Keep You Around, and I was hooked. And so then I went to another one, and they've got the newest album, Dorothy Lane Out, is called Locks and Pockets. Uh, it's the newest song. And that was the song I was going to play for you guys. But then I thought, you know what? I'm going to go back to Keep You Around because that song I played That's for That's what Cindy. initially hooked you. Yeah. Yep. Cindy liked that one the best, so I said, okay. Yes, Cindy, God bless you her. You know yeah. you got to go with that. Right. Because, um, oh, yeah. She she liked that song more than, than the Locks and Pockets. So, mm-hmm. um, But before I play it, I'm going to play you guys the interview because Nick reached out to me and says, hey, uh, we'd love to be on the podcast, but do you do interviews or anything like that? I said, right sure. I said, we'll, we'll Skype an interview and uh, – um, got that all put together. So here's a little, quick little 10-minute interview with Nick from Dorothy Lane. Nick? Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm awesome. I really appreciate you coming on the JFJ Conspiracy and uh, uh, sharing a little info about the band. Yeah, of course. Uh, I read on Bandcamp that you started this with your brother-in-law, Lauren. Yeah, we uh, we met, obviously, through my sister. And uh, right when we first met, we kind of realized that we both loved playing music and we were both in uh, bands at the time, and so when we uh, when we both like left our prior bands, we kind of just instantly said like, "I think this needs to happen." Yeah. <laughs> and so we uh, we started writing songs together, and just been it's been really fun. So, well, one thing I notice about the band is is great song lyrical content. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you guys you guys tell a good story on in every song that I've heard. That's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Um, I want to know, what are you in particular, what are your musical influences? What what, what were you brought up on? Uh, I was actually brought up on rap, funny enough. Uh, <laughs> I grew up in a neighborhood where, like, nobody was really listening to rock and roll. You know, my, my parents were listening to rock and roll, but that was about <laughs> right. it. And I, I thought they were about the most uncool people in the world. Of course. Of course, but, of course you know. 20 years later, I couldn't have been more excited to go to a Rush concert with my dad. That was like uh, the funnest thing I've, I've ever done with him. So like, you know, but when you're influenced by all your friends, my biggest, my biggest influence was, were like Tupac growing up, you know, <laughs> like that was my, that was my go-to music for a long time. And then kind of around like 2004, I just felt like rap was garbage and it, just, it was so bad i couldn't stand what was coming out and one i i think on like a job site where i was working somebody was playing like um up in the bay area it's 105.1 or whatever the radio station was and i heard a song by the killers and i was like oh my god this is this is amazing like this is really good and then it kind of turned me on to like rock and roll and getting away from you know getting away from rap and so it's funny that you ask what I grew up on is mm-hmm. not anything what we... Oh, that's great. Like, yeah. <clears throat> and it's funny you mentioned Rush is your first concert. Uh, that's the album that we are revisiting, uh, Permanent Waves. Oh, it's, that's uh, cool. And it's our <clears throat> classic album this week that we'll be talking about. So nice. stay tuned for that. And, and a very um, obvious question, I'm sure you get asked this a lot, but where did you come up with the name of Dorothy Lane? Uh, the Dorothy Lane was the street name that Lauren lived on when we started the band. (laughs) So we, we tried to come up with a couple interesting names and we wanted it to have some kind of meaning, but you know, that's probably one of the hardest things to come up with as a a good band name. So we just, it's funny because we get, um, we'll get messages on like our social media and stuff that say like, Hey Dorothy, we were, (laughs) were, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to delete that right away. Cause you're, you didn't even bother to look at it. Right. <laughs> well, when I was searching Bandcamp, uh, I I usually stay away from a lot of the uh, female lead vocalist bands because mm-hmm. Jim likes female pop, and, and Jerry yeah. likes a lot of that. So, I, but then the name came up, and the, of course the 
the picture. I think it's your father or Lauren's father. Yeah, yeah. That threw me off, so that's why I had to give yeah, it a listen. Right. Yeah, that is, that's Lauren's dad. Uh, he passed away right before we put out our first uh, our first like demo. So we mm. we kind of put him as our uh, as our logo for a little bit. Oh, that's great. Well, he'd be proud because you guys are doing some good stuff. Oh, thank you. And and tell me about your uh, songwriting process because, like I was saying, you guys have depth to your lyrics. I really enjoy the uh, storytelling process that you do. Yeah, I think um, for so the way our songs kind of come together is Lauren and I write the like the majority of the lyrics. Um, we kind of write on our own because I live <clears throat> I live kind of outside of Sacramento and he lives in Martinez, which is kind of near like Berkeley. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we don't get a ton of time together to just sit and hash songs out like like normal bands would. But right. um, we kind of just bring things to each other and uh just work them out and once we kind of figure out how the how the flow of the song is going to go then we bring it to the band and then they kind of all come together after that so it lyrically they don't really change that much they the structure of the songs change change a lot Mm -hmm. in the in our songwriting process but it we don't it's never like this is how the song is supposed to be play it like this it's always like everyone has a say in their part we never really like we make suggestions for each other of course but we never like say like i don't like what you're doing there like right. change that so i think that's kind of part of it and we if we're not really having fun with a song we usually just move on because that's the i mean we have like one or two slow songs on the album and they both of them pick up mm-hmm. half through the song so it's kind of like those are probably where we were like, all right, like this slow part's really cool, but now we're going to pick it up and <laughs> like turn it into a punk rock song. Right. Well, but, I noticed on the uh, Relay for Life mm-hmm. album that you have available on Bandcamp, uh, it's live. Yeah. Uh, that has a, a lot of good tunes that I noticed came up, you know, at different times that you guys re-recorded. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we, uh we were writing and we had set a date to record and we were kind of like almost stressing to get all these new songs written and they kind of weren't coming along really well. And Lauren kind of presented the idea to me. He's like, dude, what if we just like do the songs we already have some justice and record them really well. So like if you can listen to like there's candy wine, candy wine is on our demo Mm -hmm. and then it's recorded in a professional studio and it just sounds completely different. Cause it's like me mixing it on garage band versus, <laughs> versus, you know, a, a professional studio in the Bay area. Right. So it's a lot, it's a lot different. So it's, I was glad that we did that. We, you know, some of the songs that we were working on just weren't coming together and I didn't want to go into the studio with songs that weren't like, 100 percent and so i think five of the songs were brand new and five of them were kind of not recycled but they were just songs that had never really been properly recorded so we just said let's just really record these and make really good recordings of them so now how often do you guys play live lately (laughs) lately it's been a lot um we we have a lot of shows in march a lot is like three or four or whatever but um, we try to keep it like once or twice a month just cause we all, like I was mentioning to you, I have kids and stuff. Right. And Lauren has kids and you know, everybody has jobs. And so it's kind of, it's hard for us to just, um, play out like every single weekend and that's right. just it's too much for us. So, well, you said you have some gigs, gigs coming up. Um, what, what have you got? Uh, we're playing in Sacramento on March 9th. Uh, at Old Ironsides, that's a really cool place. And then we're playing in Crockett on March 22nd. And then we're actually taking a break all through April because our bass player is getting married and is going on a honeymoon for like three weeks, which God bless him. That sounds yeah. awesome. So Very nice. that's nice. crazy. Yeah, so that'll be nice to have a little bit of a, of a break, but we're going to probably hit the ground running in June and start doing more stuff. Excellent. And one, one final question for you besides Bandcamp, uh, is your music available on other platforms? It's available anywhere 
you listen to music. Um, the whole we did the CD Baby uh, distribution mm-hmm. stuff. So it's iTunes, Spotify, Google, YouTube. Deezer is a thing I've never right. used. I don't know. I think it's big in Europe, but um, yeah, anywhere except Pandora. Pandora is really picky. Oh, they're they're tight. They're, yeah, they'll yeah, they don't they don't I, want much. Yeah, yeah. So no, Pandora doesn't like us yet. So well, I actually received a letter from them saying don't don't send us anymore. Um, you get one <laughs> shot, and if we reject you, you're rejected. That's so, funny. Yeah. So yeah. what are you gonna do? Whatever. <laughs> Well, Nick, I really appreciate you coming on the conspiracy and uh Thank you for having me. Oh yeah. I want all the fans to get out there and check your music out. Uh we'll leave all the links uh on the YouTube page and our Facebook page. And uh check out Dorothy Lane. All right. Thanks. Hey, really appreciate it. Thanks. All right now. All right. I, I wanna say thank you very much to Nick. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, thank you. And, and uh, awesome. great interview, Frank. Yeah. Well done. Uh, you know what? It, it helps when you have someone who, who obviously loves what they're doing. Yeah. And um, Nick, Nick and his brother-in-law, Lauren, av- obviously enjoy what they're what they're putting out. So yeah. uh, the song I'm going to play for you guys is called Keep You Around. And uh, check this out from Dorothy Lane. Keep you around from Dorothy Lane. Good stuff. You know, it's just pure rock and roll. It doesn't uh, get any better. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, almost a little honky tonkish vibe to the voice. A, a little bit, a little bit, and I don't know which one is singing on that particular song. Who's singing? But um, yeah, a little bit of a, a little honky growl to it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you get a chance, check out Relay for Life. It was actually, it's a live album that they recorded. They did for a, um, a uh, the Relay for Life up there. They're from Northern California. Um, Lauren, I believe, lives up in Martinez. And um, they, they go back and forth up there from the Berkeley area in Martinez. Oh, yeah, they're in the Bay Area, right? Yeah. 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 But uh, check out their live album because it is, it's just raw. Rock and roll. Yeah. Just... You can if you can put it out there live and it sounds good, you're you're doing something right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I was I was it, usually, you know, I don't like it too <clears throat> slick. I don't like a whole lot of overproduction. I don't want, you know, um I, I want to just hear the music and and you can hear talent, yeah. Yeah. You you could hear the, the, the pick hitting the string and that's what I like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a little raw. Mm-hmm. Um a little surprising for you, Mr. Dragato. I little... understand. I understand. <laughs> well, well, you know, he's you, you've been, you've he's been surprising Jim. me a lot lately. Yeah, he's mellowing with age. Yeah, he's 55. I, I don't think he's mellowing. I, I don't think it's that. It's just uh, his his picks are 
just a little, little different than what I know Frank to be. So. He's always been like that. Well, I tell you, like I said, if we he's could, an, uh, he's an enigma. Yeah. <laughs> All right, right. If we he's, could, an un, he's an unknown quantity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, let me let me tell you, music <laughs> should be fun. Yes. Okay. Uh, Music I, should be fun. I, we I had think, this discussion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, you should be able to enjoy what you're listening to. And the moment I heard these guys, I enjoyed it. And it's not something that I have a lot of in my collection, as you know. Mm-hmm. Um, my my type of fun, like well, you know, Van Halen, uh, David Lee Roth, and, and hooting and hollering, and all that kind of stuff. That's fun. But something about these guys. And and listening to that interview, knowing that Nick was brought up on rap, I know and, weird, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and now he's playing rock music. Well, he sure hasn't figured it out. Yeah, no, they've got a good thing going. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I look uh, catchy. Forward... It's a catchy tune. Yeah, Very. I, I just look forward to see where they where well, they written. they head in the future. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Dorothy Lane, I like it. Dorothy yeah. Lane, check them out, people. They're on. Yeah. They, like like he said in the interview, they're available everywhere. Uh, we kind of got a laugh over the Pandora situation because, man, those right. guys are tighter <laughs> than a duck's butt, I tell you. So, <laughs> but anyways, hey, guys, let's talk about. Watertight. Yes. Let's More t- watertight let's, than. T- yes. <laughs> let's talk about Rush and Permanent Waves. What do you think? All right. Yes. <clears throat> let's yes. Yes. Yes, um, yes, and yes. My first inauguration into rush was hearing working man on a jukebox i think at pizza hut or something like that um in glendora which i find kind of odd because they hadn't really broken big well this was this was in 1980 when permanent waves was already out oh okay and i'd never really heard their music prior to that um they weren't on my radar uh, nor i yeah Uh -uh. Uh, nope. But I heard Working Man, and I thought, wow, these guys rock. This is this is a good tune here. And so I had heard Spirit Radio, of course, on KLOS, like everybody else. Yeah, like everybody else, yep. And I thought, wow, they they got it going on. These guys are good. So I went out and bought that album. And um, I think it's it's another album. It's 35, 40 minutes long. It's not a, you know. I think it was 38, yeah, something yeah, like that. It's, yeah, it's a short album. Um and I'll say right off the bat, least favorite song, and it's not for any other reason that it's nine minutes and 16 seconds, is uh, Natural Science. Natural and, Science, yes. You know, if I want to hear my mute music, I'll put on my I'll pull on my Calm app. Yeah, yeah, that is. And get calm. Get calm, right? Go into a little. Uh, <laughs> and that's exactly what that was. That was a, a you know meditation track. Ex- yep. With the music and the waterfall and everything else, and um, but the. The song Between Us or Entre Nos or what, however That's you pronounce it. That's my favorite it. is Entre Nous. That's my favorite. Is that it is? Not I, Entre Nous. I, 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 I don't know so. how to pronounce it, but I know to me that is what um, they were headed towards for their next album, Moving Pictures, which mm-hmm. I absolutely adored and played the H out of that eight track. So mm-hmm. Entre Nous I like because it's bringing in the keyboards and how they deliver it. So that was probably my favorite song off the album and then Free Will. Mm-hmm. Because of course it has the classic line: "If you choose not to decide, you still have made a still choice." Have made a choice. Cosmic people. Yeah, too deep. <laughs> too deep for me. I here. I was. Cosmic. I was still Ooh. busy living after midnight and breaking the law. <laughs> yeah. That's and then I listened to Rush, and I'm like, "Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. This doesn't make sense." Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Good album. Now you talk yes. about a well well produced album. The. Uh, yeah, you know the, the the flangy guitars in the beginning, and just like I said, there there's tight. a it's level tight. of volume that is controlled. You know, it doesn't overpower you, but you can play it as loud as you want. It's just it's compressed a certain way. I don't know. It's just it's good were stuff. you Frank? I don't I don't know. When I, I was listening again to it today, mm-hmm. and uh, I I didn't remember being that many effects on the guitar. Tons of effects, flange, and then the hearing place. it today is like, oh, gosh, I don't remember it being yeah. that that sort of process. But I, I don't it, either. It really is. Yeah, yeah. No, that that's what I was saying. I, it was there's so much going on with with the effects, but yet you hear every note. Yeah, you know, it's just yeah. the way it's there's done no is amazing. Yeah, there's no flanger. 
Flanger was big right about that time. Must have been. It seemed like a lot of people were playing through Flanger yeah. at that time. Yeah, that was, you know, I, 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 I just enjoyed the album as a whole. Um, and I, I've said before, we talked about 2112 and that overture going on forever and everything. And, um, and to have a drummer write all your lyrics, it just, it's weird also. I mean, it, they're not known to be the <laughs> smartest people in the world. Not, not, you know. Don't tend to be the most cerebral members oh, of the band. They make a living out of Sorry, all of my drummer friends. Yes. <laughs> it's a stereotype. It's yes. a stereotype. I'm That's just kidding. what it is. <laughs> you have a favorite track on that album, Jim? Uh, Spirit of Radio. Spirit of Radio, yeah. Spirit of Radio. Um, First one I heard, um, and um, to this um, day, um, still my favorite Rush song. Uh, yeah. First one I ever heard, still my favorite Rush song. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is that, um, you know, I remember I remember a kid at school wearing a, I think he had like a 2112 shirt. Mm-hmm. And I was asking him about Rush and because I, I really knew nothing about the band too much. And he was saying, like, they have this amazing drummer. The guy's off the hook and, um, you know, their songs are really great and this and that. Just, you know, going on and on about him. And I could remember looking at their albums, you know, like picking them up at Music Plus and, mm-hmm. and just I was like thinking like they look like a prog band. <laughs> It was kind of like the vibe I got from like the album covers and everything else. And I remember looking at um, what was their first live album, All the World's a Stage, mm-hmm. I think. And I remember looking at and it has their like stage set up on the front. And I thought, right. man, these guys look serious. This yeah. looks like yeah. it. Like these guys get in and knock it out of the park or whatever. But I was never motivated to, you know, I, I thought they were kind of more like an ELP or a... Hmm. Uh, yeah, something a little more on the prog side. So I wasn't really, I was a little afraid of it. And then when I heard Spirit of Radio, I was like, holy cat. Yeah. This is great. And uh, I think uh, I think I borrowed my drummer, Mike Chastain. Hey, Mike. Hmm. I think I borrowed Mike's Yeah, you're going to need to apologize to home. Mike from what you said about five minutes ago. It's on <laughs> the way, Mike Chastain. The apology Mike's, is coming. Mike's awesome. Uh, he is good cat. <laughs> He's a good cat. Yeah, he is a good cat. And so, yeah. um, I think I borrowed his album. I took it home for two, uh, probably a week or two, and uh, I think I listened to that side one, Spirit of Radio, Free Will, Jacob's Ladder, mm-hmm. over and over again, and and I struggled with side two, <laughs> you know, because it 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 just totally obliterate obliterates my three minute rule. Every yeah. single song does. Um, I'll make an exception for Spirit of Radio and Free Will. Great tune. Well, well Side um, Two slowed down quite a bit too. It was yes, a, it did. It, they were contrast in in sides for sure. Well, same same thing like you, Frank. I remember like listening to the songs and reading the lyrics, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I was just like, "What? Well, this is like some next level lyrics, right?" And uh, you know, I'd probably been playing bass for maybe a year at that point. So I mean, like, I the bass playing was just it was I was. <laughs> holy oh, yeah. cat what is the this guy these guys are like from another planet it was really like like you said it's not it's not like throw the record on and kind of forget about it you know it's not no, background you music you yeah. have to like you really to yeah. delve into it yeah. and um when i got home from work today i listened to just natural science yeah and uh there's actually some burn in there mm-hmm on the guitar, it, gets, I mean, it picks up. Life's, yeah, yeah li- life's and unleashes in that yeah. song, man. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. problem with Rush, for me, is they're not a sing-along band. You know, they're 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 not that they're catchy music, but their lyrics are they're not the type of stuff that you know, like I said, living after midnight and you know those type of lyrics. It's completely different world. So when you're singing rush you end up pretty much like singing the whole song instead right. of just a verse that's very cosmic frank i'm trying to think have i ever sang along with rush yeah no, no. i've done the whole tune well everybody tries especially just singing that upper register like getty lee and it does oh that's way above the top impossible. Yeah. yeah that's that's so you you ruin lunar it. yeah so i you know i don't don't sing along to rush whatsoever you know i hum hum and i air guitar but there's no singing along. No. A um, lot, lot of great songs. Yeah. But, you know, um, so I, I borrowed the record. I took it back after a couple of weeks, and I was kind of done with it. Yeah. Does that sound terrible? Yeah. I, you know, 
No. It came on the radio. I still loved it. Yeah. I mean, I have permanent waves in my collection. I have moving pictures in my collection. Mm-hmm. You know, I went out and bought them later. Yeah. Um, By any chance, did either of you get get an opportunity to watch the uh, uh, farewell tour on cable? I did not. Um, again, probably not... parts of it, Frank. Yeah, uh-huh. it might be a good thing to revisit, though. It's awesome. Because yeah. it, it stops along the tour the whole way, and it just shows you a band that's been around for 40 years, and most of the road crew has been with them that whole time. Right. And it's like watching a final show of your final episode of your favorite television show. It's mm. ending, and you know it's ending, mm. and it's, it's bittersweet for everybody. You know, and wow. it, it, was, it was fun to watch because they were still playing. At the top of their game, absolutely top of their game. Yep, but, and they went out on their on their terms, but it was sad because all these people who've been working with Rush for forty years are now out of a job. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, you know, hopefully they get compensated. Yeah, I'm properly, sure they will. You know, for that yeah. kind of time. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a uh, there was a fantastic uh, Rush documentary on Netflix, probably a year or two ago. I don't even know if it's on there still, but it was just great Mm -hmm. and uh if you can find that search it out um yeah to me it's like three guys are putting out all that sound wow yeah i mean there's other trios out there guys don't get me wrong but to me rush is oh they're musicians oh yeah there's no doubt there they could they could sit down and plug in anywhere and get with it yeah so so jim gave the record back after a couple weeks and you hear listen to it on the radio to his drummer (laughs) You know, the ones that aren't very bright. <laughs> but but does the album... He's one of the bright ones. Oh, good save, Jim. Well, you know what? I noticed he likes a lot of stuff on the conspiracy, <laughs> so he seems very intelligent. Good save, yeah. Jim. Uh, yeah, he also seems to side with Frank a lot. Well, he's very intelligent, like I yeah, just I said. Yeah, I had a that. feeling that's now, what wait a he minute, would say. Jim, you sure? <laughs> but does by his, the own, album... by, his own admi- by his own admission, so... <laughs> does the album stand up... Um... With all the great rock albums that we've uh, reviewed, yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I re-enjoyed it after all these years. I yeah. Well, you know what? With the headphones. And I'm after like, listening, yeah, about. after listening to it again today, I thought, you know, this is something that probably should be in my. Ra- I yeah. mean, Spirit of Radio is in my rotation. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, uh, what, Free what Will find, probably is too. What I find so cool about Permanent Waves is 1980. It came out, and the sound is still fresh. Uh-huh. It doesn't. It didn't have all that reverb and a lot of overproduction that a lot of, you know, hair bands did. Back it doesn't then. sound old at all. No. I, yeah, it's it's aged well. Yeah. Uh-huh. You go back yep. and listen to Racer X or some of that stuff, um, you know, that came out in the eighties. Um, it's all, it's unlistenable. <laughs> you know, it's good music, but they they threw so Don't much back, reverb. Frank, how do you really feel? Yeah. yeah, no, I mean you got to be able to to tolerate the the way it was recorded. Yeah, you yeah. know, and, oh. and Rush sounds like you know it could have been Fresh. recorded. Yeah. Hold up, absolutely temporary yep. good stuff. Hmm. Well, they, it also doesn't feel like it's beating you over the head. No, I mean it, it's great musicianship, and I mean obviously, like I said, the lyrics are are. Like on another level. Yeah. And let me just say this. There is a... <laughs> Excuse me. You, you will see this show up. Uh, writers, usually people who have no idea what they're talking about, will say, um, Rush is one of the worst bands ever, and we're going to tell you why. Mm-hmm. And they hold up the lyrics of Tom Sawyer right. and say, <clears throat> this is the kind of stuff this band puts out. It's one song. It's one stinking song, people, and I would put Rush's lyrics up against anybody's lyrics. Oh, Red Barquetta right off the bat. Anybody's lyrics. You're talking one song out of a catalog of 200 and... Uh, I looked it up once. Yeah, the lyrics are so uh, two, bad. They, like, yeah. like 230 recorded songs, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's you know, not re- including live versions or anything else. And I, I would put their catalog up against anybody's. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody's. And yep. so, to, so to pick, and Tom Sawyer, my least favorite song of yeah. all, because I, I just don't hear it, and I, <laughs> I don't like know, the lyrics and whatever else. But that's one song out of a 
you know, like I said, 200 songs. No, I picked Spirit of Radio Spacey because it was. Think it's by on you. It was oh, there to crazy. me. Spirit, the the Permanent Waves was their most well known album. It's the one that you know opened my eyes to them. But yeah. they got better with time. Yep. You know, when you go back and and you listen to some of their stuff from a few years ago, it's still it's they're still pulling out quality music. Oh yeah. Yep. So, and, and not too many bands can say that. Usually, second or third album, it's like, you know, they're done. Peak of peak. They hit. A, yep. They hit a little stint. I don't know uh, what album. Maybe Signals, right around that time, where it was a. Uh, it was a little too keyboardy for me. Yeah. Grace under pre- yeah. 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 They had kind of abandoned the whole guitar approach. Yeah. And um, it was a little. Well, I, I, you know, you know how I am with keyboards and hard rock bands. Just, they just don't mesh for me. Well, I always laugh because I, I always used to just say, well, after a certain time, it was like Geddy Lee's nads dropped because he was he stopped singing <laughs> in that upper register. You know, and everything was a lower, <laughs> lower register. So everything, the whole dynamic uh, of the band changed at that point. You know? Right. And so. it was uh, it was kind of interesting. I remember in that documentary, um, I think it was Neil Peart said. You know, we, we really enjoyed the things that all the new wave bands were doing. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, we weren't so much older than those guys that we couldn't appreciate kind of what a lot of those bands were doing. And we loved that stuff and, and incorporated a lot of that into our own sound. And You know what I, what I thought was almost sad is the final tour. Uh, he was talking about once they retire and their last show is over, he's packing away his drums and he doesn't plan on ever picking them up again. He's done. He's actually yeah, I heard he done, is, done isn't retiring. I heard he is, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Alex and uh, Getty Lee. Getty Lee, matter of fact, he's working on a solo album. It's supposed to be out pretty soon. And I'm sure it'll just sound like a Rush album. But um, well, let's yeah. see. Be interesting. He wrote yeah. a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But to say you're done and you're done, I don't know if it's because of medical reasons or, or what's really going on. But if he can't uh, perform at the level that he's used to, he's not, not interested in doing it. Uh, yeah, and so. he wrote uh, he wrote the lyrics on different strings. Yeah, that was him. So, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I think I think it holds up to everything else that's on the album. I mean, it's it doesn't pale in comparison lyrically, right? To anything else? Oh. So, I mean, he's he can do it. Well, let's uh, look forward to the next episode, and I think it's Jim's pick for Ooh. what you got, album James, to revisit. Uh, I had it narrowed down to two. Ooh. Ooh. Here we go, folks. I'm writing it down. And Love here it. we go. ACDC, Back in Black. Back Woo! in Black. The comeback album. The comeback album. Mm, very good. That's a classic for sure. Oh. Top 10 uh, albums, sales of all time, I believe. I would, there. well, yeah, I would say uh, probably, yeah. probably the biggest album of our high school time. Hmm. It's right up there. Yep. Yeah. I'd give that a I'd give that a a nod yes. Yeah. Even, let me just even the non metalheads even the non metalheads. Yeah, that well, album. I'm trying to think <laughs> what came out when we were in high school, and the other the only other thing that was big and cosmic was uh, the Wall. Mm-hmm. I yeah, remember that just causing such a big thing in high. That's when we were in high school, folks. Not Jim, just Frank and I. Right. Yeah, we were in high school in the we, Wall. We uh, would Jim, drive over Jim. to the elementary school yeah. and uh, let. Jim and let, to our cassette and let train. little Jimmy listen to it. We had to haul, yeah, little Jimmy. Yeah. You know, Frank, we can't. We got to come back later. It's nap time. Yep. <laughs> Take him a milk and a juice box. Yeah. <laughs> I was all did set. They, did they even a have a juice box back then? <laughs> no, but it was just a plastic uh, thing with the foil lid. That you, and then a you little milk carton. That was it. <laughs> You're killing me, guys. You're killing me. Chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. <laughs> Give me the chocolate milk. Uh, okay. So, so ACDC, Back in Black. Back in Black. Great album. Oh, man. And uh, look forward to that. Real quick question before we, we sign off for this episode. Had Bon Scott lived? Would, would, we ta- would we be talking about ACDC right now? This is the question for next time or right uh, now? For right now, your quick, quickest little, without getting too deep into it, just a yay, nay, possibly. I think, I think yay, because I, I loved Highway to Hell. And well, when he passed away, I was crazy. Rushed. Well, a lot of those songs for Back in Black were already written. There, oh, really? Well, there you go. Yeah, I don't so know about we, the lyrics, but the music was was yeah. already written. Oh, I love Highway to Hell, and 
you know, of course, when he passes away, oh no, man, they just they just hit it big time. Oh no, yeah. and then you know what comes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, back back in black, Mind I think lower. took it took him to the next level. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. As far as listenership, mm-hmm. um, but is that I all would, because of Brian I would, I no, I would say yes. I would say we'd still be talking about AC. Yeah, we would. Oh. You still got Angus and Malcolm and Phil Rudd. And... I loved I loved him up to that point. So would we still be talking about him? Yes. Would the world be talking about him? Hard telling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that album would be what it is, you know, with Bon Scott. It's hard to say. Yeah, that's um, that's kind of hard to run through the old uh, bean a, counter. A lot of, yeah, yeah, a lot of my favorite ACDC is, is Bon Scott stuff. Yeah. Uh, same here. Yeah. So... Mm. Uh, I definitely my, prefer him good, one, Jim. good one, Jim. Yeah. yeah. It'd be a good album to look at. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Then. Glad, glad you guys approve. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> yes. All right, then. Well, my voice is about to give out. So if uh, there's well done, nothing Frank else. For hanging in there. Well done, Frank, for hanging in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well then I guess the shop is closed. Keep Shop's rocking, closed. people. Keep All right. rocking. All right. Good night.